Hey hi welcome back to the series of automotive sessions i am dr krishna hema your automotive expert so in this video we are going to discuss about v model traceability i'm talking about basic v model traceability and this video is for beginners so if you look at this complex diagram so you would tend to forget a lot of traceability aspects so for this to make it easy i have split it one one requirement in one one slides so let us get into it the first thing here if you see is stakeholder requirements stakeholder requirements are nothing but the user requirements or the customer requirements which are in natural language that you and me will speak the english way the, the this is a natural way language so these customer requirements which are in natural human language will be converted into um system requirements after analyzing technically so uh, system requirements uh, will be in technical terminology with a verification criteria in it and also there should be an Id unique identification always remember that should, there should be a unique identification number for the stakeholder requirements for the system requirements for for the system architecture anything like you there should be an unique identification number in order to in identify that particular unit with a name okay uh, so if for example if you have uh, uh, three four hamas so you cannot uh, uh, call a particular hema right so the same way like you have to have the unique identification number to um, to call or to to uh, have the traceability okay uh, so once the stakeholder requirements are converted into system requirements that after analysis the system requirement will have a verification criteria that verification criteria based on the verification criteria we have to write the test case uh one system requirement could have one test case or more than one test cases but uh, each and every system requirement should be verified okay and system requirement uh, so these system qualification test cases will get executed and uh, you will have the qualification results so that means a test report with a uh, test case pass test case fail things will be there uh and summary will be there like which test case is failed that means which particular requirement is not implemented proper or implemented proper will be known by establishing bidirectional traceability if you see here you can have you can see two arrows one forward one backward that means bidirectional traceability so this should have that information that should have this information so both uh, carries Uh, the information for each other so after system requirement should be traceable to system architecture means like based on system requirements we need to prepare system architecture that's the reason we have we should have a traceability to system architecture and based on system requirements you will have software requirements so a soft Uh, software requirements will get extracted from system requirements this will be one of the inputs for system requirement so we should ensure the traceability to software requirements also so here uh, system requirements uh, are traceable to first thing is up the stakeholder requirements or the customer requirements parallel or you know uh, the verification activity is system qualification test specification or test cases and its system qualification results so next level is system architecture traceability and next level next to next level it is like software requirement should be traceable to system requirements so the next thing is traceability requirements at system architecture level so we have uh, be of already derived the system requirements so system requirements will act as an input to system architecture system architecture is nothing but a high level design in which you will see um, the inter, uh, interfaces between them it's like uh, uh, a simple architecture could be an hierarchical design that means uh, uh you can imagine it as a family tree also like uh, 
each and every element uh, what to implement first what to implement next uh, which has dependency on what like what can be implemented parallel so these all dependencies will be known when you are writing the system architecture so this system architecture uh, will have the interfaces and how to how to integrate the system also uh, will be known once after the development so you will develop system integration test specification that means a less uh, test cases a list of test cases will be derived out of system architecture so uh, you should be you should have traceability to system integration test cases or test specification and which in turn will have a traceability to system integration test results if anything which is failed in system integration testing that should be traceable to system architecture level so anything any any um, any failure can say that Uh, the system architecture or the system integration is not integrated properly with respect to uh, system architecture or uh, the functionality of the integrated system is failed something like this and system architecture will be an input to your software requirements this is the next phase of v model so you should ensure this means system architecture will be an input to software requirements so if you see the system architecture then system architecture should have a traceability to system requirements should have a traceability to system integration test cases and which in turn um, have traceability to system integration test results and coming to the next level it should have traceability to software requirements moving to next uh we are talking about uh, software requirements level traceability requirements so if you see software requirements it is in the middle so uh, software requirements should be traceable to system requirements so because the input is from system requirements the segregation of system requirements uh, will be from um, the system requirements will be further classified into software and hardware requirements so system requirements will be as will be an input for software requirements and wherein you will have the direct traceability to system architecture system architecture is also an input for software requirements so here you have two inputs you should you should remember that is system requirements and system architecture we need to ensure bidirectional traceability between or among system requirements system architecture and software requirements okay so once after deriving the software requirements we will write the test cases for qualification at system level sorry software level so qualification test cases or test specification will be developed based on software requirements and its verification criteria so when it is executed so we will have the test results for qualification so those should be ensured here also the next level like software architecture will be developed based on software requirements so we need to ensure the traceability also like there should be traceability to software units so many people will ask like why we need uh, traceability directly to software requirements so uh, we need to ensure that th this particular software software requirement is implemented so uh, instead of going back like a software unit software detail design software architecture and like uh, it's like reverse in reverse engineering pattern so we can directly have it in have it in a way like software requirements to software units if you have a traceability you can ensure directly that this particular requirement is implemented it is coded properly like that so Uh, there is a revision again because it is a it is a complex thing so software requirements should have uh, the inputs are system requirements and system architecture it is verified as qualification test specification and qualification test results and it will be act as software requirements will be an input for software architecture and will be an input for software units
so coming to the next thing is software architecture level software architecture uh, what is the input for software architecture we have software requirements on top of it so the software requirements will be acting as an input to software architecture and it is verified as software integration test specification or test cases and the results uh, are captured in software integration test results so we have to ensure the verification traceability here and the next level is software detail design or software unit design so uh, the input is software requirements verification is software integration test cases the output is software detail design so next thing is software unit design or software detail design uh is explained here a low level design software low level design so it has alternative names don't get confused you have unit design or detail design or low level design everything is same and similarly architecture design or high level design is same okay the traceability requirements of software at software detail design level is shown in this diagram so if you see the software unit design is in the middle the input for software unit design is software architecture design and the verification how it can be verified is through software unit test cases and the software unit test cases will have software unit test results so what is the input for software unit test cases test specification is software unit design so a, a lot of people will get confused here so um how do we derive software detail design uh, how how do we derive software unit test cases uh, so this is how like the input is software unit design and then for after once after having the software unit design you can start developing you can code the software unit so here again the summary is like unit test sorry unit design software unit design will have an input from architecture design software architecture design and will be an output for software unit so will be verified through software unit testing and its associated results so here is a traceability requirement at software unit level or unit construction level or your coding level so here the inputs are software requirement so we already spoke about it why do we need software requirement direct traceability to software unit whether we uh, we can we can directly ensure that the software requirement is implemented or not the status of the software requirement will be known directly by di establishing direct uh, traceability to do, to software requirement also there is an uh, input from software unit design how do you develop software unit is through software unit design only but you need to ensure traceability from software unit requirement the input is software unit design but the traceability requirement is to software requirement so software uh, once software unit is implemented it will be it will be verified through static analysis uh the static analysis tools are available like, available in the market like helix qac or any other thing like uh, where you can test the coding guidelines like mistra coding guidelines for the c and c++ in case of automotive and uh, you will have code reviews like the peer reviews will be that will be done or the uh, or the verification reviews in case of you know or technical reviews everything is it has same names technical review code review peer review um, or verification review all these things are same uh, so it will have it should be traceable to your software code so traceability requirement at change request level a change request is nothing but a change in requirement which comes after freezing the requirement once uh we say it is there should there is no change in the requirement it's like if you if you have a signature on it or sign off on it or you know uh, yeah once it is done um this all then you will get a change request from the customer 
so or in if you have an internal product then when you do for the more analysis or in between that in between then you realize something is not there or uh, you need it needs some more clarification kind of so whatever the input is the change request is a uh, is a change in requirement so then once you get the change request you need to um, identify the impacted test cases and uh, you need to conduct the test results this is the traceability we need to establish so whenever a new change request comes so you need to conduct an impact analysis and how it is impacting on the other requirements you need to get to know so once we get to know uh, the requirement uh, impacts then the impacted chunk will be tested so usually change request will have a regression testing or sometimes if you have more number of change request or the change request is big enough that is impacting almost most of the things then you need to do the uh, full cycle testing so change request and its impacted test cases and test results so these impacted test cases could be at qualification level could be at integration level could be at modular level or unit level so these all things we need to remember and we need to uh, we need to trace the change request like the way we we trace the requirement hope uh, you got the concept so thank you so much for your time